Hey guys, uh, my name is Adalia and I am going to be talking with Bill Vigil and he's going to be giving us a little background of who he is and where he comes from and how martial arts has impacted his life. How's everybody doing out there? Um, I guess you guys all know who I am, Bill Vigil from Man with Fight League and with Grappling Championship. Um, raised in Connecticut all my life, you know. Uh, was into all type of combat sports as a kid. At the age of 11, I started boxing with Johnny Dukes at Harvard. Duke did that for about six years. Got into American Temple. Did that for about 11 years. Second degree in American Temple. Started Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I think, in uh, the, the, probably, I think, the 20, 2007, uh, under Royce Gracie and uh, Jimmy Hughes and uh, West Harvard. So I've been doing that, you know, and from that I decided to start my own grappling league. Been doing that since 2012. Uh, basically transitioned that into MMA, and MMA grappling, MMA, you know, uh, I started in 20... Uh, Your ammo fight league grappling in 2012. What made you go into that since you were doing boxing first? Uh, like I said, I did uh, I did karate in America, what I call American Temple, you know, under uh, at Master Ed Carter. I did that. I really wasn't uh, a ground guy until, you know, I met some people that uh, did uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Kind of impressed me because, uh, you know, I saw a lot of the techniques that I wasn't even familiar with or, you know, knew of. So uh, that, that sparked an interest and uh, I was seeking schools for that and uh, I was introduced to uh, Jim Hughes and Wes Harper who are, I decided to start training under them. Nice and um, you're also the CEO of Ammo Fight League, the MMA promotion. I have a friend, uh, Sam Romanelli, he's a professional boxer, he used to box with uh, Vinnie Paz from Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. uh, he basically, you know, told me that we should start a promotion but we found on the app that we tried to get licensed that it was a legal. Yeah, um, you know, we decided to do grappling rather than MMA since it was illegal in the state of Connecticut. Okay. Uh, we formed <laughs> Ammo Grappling in 2012, and we did that for about four years before we decided to transition into MMA and cross over the state line into the state of Massachusetts because Connecticut still didn't legalize it. Okay. Now, how did the COVID-19 affect your show had to be postponed? How did that affect you and all the fighters? Well, it, it, uh, we had the show already scheduled to go, you know, we're ready to go over to our St. Patrick's, you know, the show uh, right up until the day of the way and, you know, it was a go. And then around lunchtime, we had a call from City Hall telling us that we have to shut down because of the, the COVID-19 uh, situation that was going on. You know, it is what it is, you know, for the safety of the fighters and the public and everybody involved, you know, we decided to basically, you know, see if we could postpone it. But up to date, you know, we still don't have a tentative date due to the fact that, you know, the state of Massachusetts still is not sure when they're going to open up, you know any type of uh, businesses or, you know, events. Okay. Now, you were a fairly new promotion at that time. Is that going to affect you starting back up? Because it doesn't look like it's going to be opening anytime soon with everything that's happening. How is that going to be affecting you with the promotion? It's not going to. I don't think it's going to affect my promotion. You know, I, I, I feel bad for the fighters and the fans, but, you know, I have a good following, you know. All my shows are successful since I started. It's been two years since I started the AM, you know. Um, we have a great venue, you know, and I'm, I'm looking to, to other venues also, you know. So it's only going to give me time to plan properly when I we do return to come out with a vengeance, you know. Because, again, I say that, you know, I feel bad for the fighters that were training up, up to that point. We had a stack card, you know. We, we sold out the show already, you know. And, um, how do you feel the fighters are, you know, handling this whole situation with having, you know, because they sacrificed so much time 
for their their training. How do you think that has an impact on the um, on them? You know, returning or anything like that. Well, you know, I, it, it, they, they were frustrated when they found out the show, you know, was canceled. And, I mean, not, not to blame anybody, they understood the situation. It wasn't something that was made by me or the venue. It was something, you know, that was delegated by the, the, the government. So, you know, it was more frustrating for them, you know, taking all that time to get prepared to, to fight and to be told that you couldn't, you know. It's frustrating, you know, and I, 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 you know, I understand, you know, how they feel, but they were all supportive, and you know, no one held me accountable for anything, you know. And, and you know, we're just hoping for the best, and hopefully, you know, to rectify the situation, you know. You, you got to look, look at it in a, in a broader picture. Of it's, you know, you have to take into consideration not only yourself but the people around you to, to, to get infected with this this virus that is unknown to everybody. So. The show scheduled for July 11th, but it's very uncertain due to the fact that the governor of Massachusetts is uncertain of when he's going to allow any events or any other business to open up. You know, even today, he announced that he's uh, changing the date to make a decision to May 18th. Yes. Now, what advice do you have for the fighters, or what words do you want to share with the fighters? Just to be patient, you know, it's it's out of everybody's control, you know, no one's at fault here, you know, you know, everybody's got to be patient, you know, just keep, you know, keep training, I know you can't train in the gym or anything, but, you know, I, I see a lot of the fighters that I know personally, they're training in their personal uh, makeshift gyms at their homes, you know, so just keep active, you know, if we're, if we're, we're told tomorrow that July 11th can happen, you know, you know, the weight cutting may be difficult, but, you know, we can change all that to make it happen, you know. So just, you know, be positive, stay, you know, stay prepared and be prepared to, uh, you know, fight when, uh, when we are when we are announced that we can do a show. One of your staff, or someone who's very close to you, has is suffering from this pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, what would you like to say to her? What would you like people to know about her? How right. I mean, I mean... Since I started AMO, you know, Christine, you know, has been a part of AMO. She's our fight relations manager, you know, everybody knows her, you know. She, she's great at what she does. She's a big part of AMO Fight League. You know, she's also a nurse. She she came down with the virus a week ago, and it was very devastating for me to hear this from her family. You know, she was, she was in communication with me, you know, like every other day. Day telling me what she was experiencing at the hospital, and she was basically telling me, "This is no joke. I'm seeing people dying. I'm seeing people suffering, and they were they had, you know, they didn't have the appropriate, you know, equipment to take care of these people. You know, it, it was sad, and to hear that she came down with it was very, very sad to me. And you know, I'm hoping for the best, but if, but if anybody knows her, you know, she's a fighter. She's a little pit bull. You know, <laughs> yes, uh, I was able to finally talk to her, you know, um, this past uh, Sunday. You know, she, she she's doing better than she was last week. But, but uh, she's still very tired, you know. It, it, it took a lot out of her, mm -hmm. her strength, you know. Uh, mentally, you know, she's really worn out. So she, she's not, she still in the hospital, and hopefully, you know, she'll be recovering. And hopefully the next post that everybody sees will be a post from her. Great, that's good. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share with us before we wrap it up? Just that, you know, I'm waiting to the day that the world finally, you know, calms down and we go back to what we would finally call a normal life. It probably won't be like we know it, but, you know, it'll be some type. And just for everybody, you know, to stay positive, stay safe, and stay home, and God bless us all. Amen. Thank you, Bill, for your time. I really appreciate it. No problem. Take care, okay? Thank you. Bye.